What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're gonna be reviewing the new Rocket Cone Pure Ultra 66 gram gaming mouse, the newest addition to the lightweight gaming mouse market. This just came out last week and kind of flew under the radar I feel. I haven't really heard too much buzz about this. Is it too little too late? We'll go over it all, the features, my thoughts and opinions on the Cone Pure Ultra in this review. First off, Rockat's really no, you know, stranger to the gaming peripheral industry. And with this being a renewed follow-up of the original Cone Pure from a few years ago, that means the polarizing shape returns as well. It's an ergonomic design with pronounced grooves that you either love or hate. Really no in-between. I personally find it quite comfortable. As we've also seen from Rockat in the past, we have two available color options to pick from, black or white, letting you, you know, pick what's gonna suit your setup theme the best. Both have these matte finishes with a slight grippy coating to the plastic mouse. It's a very minor coating, but it does provide a nice feel. It's just not too noticeable. Now taking a look at it, like I said, similar to the predecessor, the Cone Pure in terms of button layout, we have the forward and backward buttons on the left side, uh, two DPI shifting buttons below the fan favorite 2D Titan scroll wheel, which returns and honestly for being a scroll wheel, it is definitely one of the nicest ones I've tried on a mouse. It's got nice tactile steps, a nice click, and a rubber texture that separates itself from the rest. Then on the palm area is the illuminated logo, which is hella bright. In terms of size, definitely on the medium side, I'd say, when compared visually here to the smaller ones with the MM710 and the Model O minus to the medium to larger ones with the Viper and Model O. So in between. It comes in at 39 millimeters tall, 70 millimeters wide at the butt with 59 millimeters wide at the gripping waist and is 115 millimeters long. Again, polarizing shape here with nice deep grooves for your thumb to rest on the left side and that right hip bone just popping out like a seven year old. So I would definitely recommend, you know, trying to get your hands on this first before you commit to buy it. Whether it be maybe your friend has one of these or the original Cone Pure. Uh, again, just to see if this fit is gonna be right for you. And for what it's worth, I noticed the product image on the actual box itself is a one-to-one -one ratio of the exact size of this mouse. So maybe if you're at Best Buy or Micro Center and they have one of these on display, you can just like palm the mouse on the box and see if it's, you know, too big or too small. I don't know, I noticed it, figured I'd bring it up, why not? So in order to hit the 66 gram weight, which by the way, the box says 69 grams, just pointing that out as well, they made some changes to the interior shell to avoid having actual holes present on the outside like we've been seeing from other companies. So with the cutouts inside on the housing, they managed to cut down about 22 grams from the Cone Pure being 88 grams, which is pretty impressive. Moving on in terms of mouse feet and mouse cable, swing and a miss. The feet here are just regular Teflon feet, you know, they're okay, they're not scratchy, but they don't give you that satisfying buttery glide from other gaming mouse we've seen. But man, that cable, they claim it's 37% more flexible, which I don't know how you come up with that, but okay. Uh, but it's a rubber cable. And in a world of paracords and other extremely, you know, flexible braided cables we've seen from other companies in the lightweight market right now, this is just a big nope. As you can see, pushing the cable also moves the mouse, which any other paracord would not do. Also, bunching up the mouse and the cable together will physically push the mouse backwards, which is just a telltale sign that you do not have a flexible cable. For example, as well, with the Model O and their paracord, it does not do those things. It acts like an actual flexible, lightweight paracord and it just feels non-existent. You don't want your mouse to feel like it has a cable, and with this, you 100% feel the cable. Then before I tell you my final thoughts on this, three things to touch on. First is the sensor, a superb 16,000 DPI owl eye sensor from their previous mice. No issues with this either, it's based on the popular Pixar 3389. Next is the Omron switches. They're the also popular FK50M for 50 million clicks, used in other mice out there as well as the Cone Pure. They're very tactile, and we'll do a sound test now so you can hear the overall clicks and the buttons. And then we have the Swarm software. It's busy. This is just busy, out of date software that people have complained about for years and there's still real no improvements. There is this pinned tab that you could kind of, you know, 
put more important things in this tab, so that's kind of nice. But everything else is just cluttered and confusing. Um, settings gives you the option to control your DPI in intervals of 50. You also have options for you know the scroll wheel tilt, double clicking speed, and Windows pointer speed. Button assignment is for reassigning the nine buttons, plus uh, the easy shift they have for an additional layer of nine functions. Illumination gives you the RGB control with just five effects to pick from. Then you have the advanced settings for polling rate, liftoff distance, where things like a voice actually reading you your DPI and volume settings if you want. Uh, but the only real good thing here that I found is built in with their macro managing tab on the bottom. It actually gives you controls for certain games. You can go in and see like what that function is in that particular game so you can assign it to your mouse. So that's pretty cool in case you don't remember what a certain function is in game. It has it laid out there for the preset ones built in. I don't know, that's, that's the one good thing I could say. But it's just on the old clunky side that is definitely in need of being revamped. It's 2019 and it's the same issue that people have had for a while now. When you have the software open and another intensive program open, um, it just gets very stuttered and slow. So bad, bad software. Now to wrap this all up, you know, I didn't have any real issues with it. Gaming was just fine. I like the grip, it's a good sensor for me. You know, it did what it was supposed to. It's a nice lightweight gaming mouse, but it's also $70. And that's just, it doesn't justify what we're getting with this mouse, I feel. I don't know what it is, but this did not blow me away, and it doesn't stand out from the rest of the lightweight gaming mouse we have out there. And for $70, which is definitely a little bit more expensive than some of the other lightweight options, it just does nothing to grab my attention and to separate itself from that pack. Um, I think the main thing that I could take away with this is just terrible cable, and you combine that with the uh, lightweight form factor of this, you feel like that would go hand in hand. You would want a lightweight cable with a lightweight mouse, but it cancels each other out. And it's just, like I said, nothing about this stands out to me. Maybe like I alluded to before, too little, too late. There might be a reason why there's no real buzz around this. It's just not what I would recommend out there right now. And guys, I'll wrap it up for my review of the Rocket Cone Pure Ultra. Hope you enjoyed. If you still want to check it out, I'll put the link for you in the description down below. Like this review, give it a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at randomfrankp. And lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.